So does does anybody or everybody know this writer? I don't know. I'm it's, Jessica Walker. It's nice to meet you too. I'm Wendell. It's a, we've met years ago. Years ago. Yes. Good to see you, to see you again. Yeah. I'm Tim. We, we know each other. We do. And Judy very well. Yeah. And we just met. Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Well, Lois, thank you for your interest in this sport. Um, it's. Uh, we just have a few questions. Sure. Say as much or as little as you feel comfortable with. Okay. Um, you know, not a big deal. Just relax. And okay. Sounds good. It may have been a long time since you had a job at <laughs> No, this is terrifying. A free job in oh, by the way. This is unpaid. You know that. Just don't pay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, very little that I do in life right now. Is dictated by money, so yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. I'm, I'm lucky. Well, so so we kind of have a set set of questions. Um, you know, spend as little or Fire as much away. time as you good. want. I'm good. So first question is, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving on the Main Street Advisory Board. Okay, um, I have been in Temple since '93. I moved here with my husband and my children. He was a physician, got in Hawaii. He's now deceased. And I have a bachelor's and master's in violin performance from the University of Texas. I am the we original and corporate. Horn, so what? Wendell and I are horns, so we appreciate that. Very good. Yes. Let's move on to the next interview. I am uh, the original board with Tom Fairley and the deceased Clyde Goodnight for the Temple Symphony. I was the first president of the Temple Symphony. Um, and then I, you know, taught bass and taught violin my whole life. Um, in about 2005, I started the Academy of Music, which was housed at Temple College. And at that point, it was a pre-college division. Judy and I know each other from the mariachi group that we started there. Um, when my husband was very ill, I stepped down from running the Academy of Music, and my assistant became the president after my husband way I came back and became her assistant, which is good because she's 15 years younger than I am. And so it, I'm going to let her deal with all of that. Um, but I'm still the director of strings. Um, if we ever meet again, I still play the Temple Symphony. Obviously, this year we, we've been not working. Um, anyhow, then about three years, about two and a half years ago, Temple College came to us because the Academy of Music had gotten so large. We had about 285 students at that point. And that was when their music department was expanding to be a four year department. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but the, yeah, the music department there is four year now. And so they said, we really need you to look for another place to go. So at that point, you know, we were a little bit shocked and you know, not sure what we were going to do. And then found out that. Christ Episcopal School had closed down. And so we entered negotiations with, with the diocese and Christ Episcopal <laughs> Church. And that summer, which would be two years ago this summer, we moved our program downtown. Um, and so we are our, our own entity there. It's been wonderful. We love it. So here, you know, we were looking for a home. And in fact, I met met with Tim right when that happened because you know we were just we had no idea what we were going to do being nonprofit and you know not having a whole lot of money and so we didn't realize that we were moving into a downtown community and it was so exciting because here we were feeling like we were like the evil stepchildren that we were pushed out of the house you know and and all of a sudden in downtown we were going oh my gosh this is so wonderful that you're here you know we brought concerts you know we had a group of, of kind of strolling strings that we would bring out on first Fridays and kind of play at different restaurants and and um, and then of course COVID hit and the world shut down. But we've been able to keep going. We have not been doing 
any kind of live ensemble things, um, but we've been able to keep our teaching going. And as of this summer, we are going to have a musical theater camps, which are at the CAC. We're going to have a hybrid string camp because now Christ Episcopal Church is having live services because we need their facilities for doing anything larger than what we can do. So we're, you know, we're, we're gradually kind of re-entering the world as, you know, most of you are as well. So my interest obviously is education, music education, children, the arts. Um, I, Monday morning, I was at the Main Street meeting, which I have not been at since COVID hit. And I was talking to Teresa Anderson. Are you guys, do you guys know Teresa? I'm cool. a marketing person. With, and and um, she got really excited when she met me because she said that they, had, before COVID, she said they had identified seven areas of marketing, basically, of bringing people to the city and, and things to address. And she said the one thing that never got done was arts and culture mm. out of those seven. And she said, you and I have to talk, you yeah. know, because, and, and of course, with the Arcadia, um, getting renovated and just presenting different opportunities because right now we have very few uh, performance venues. You know, um, let's say we do our musical theater at, at the CAC. We do our kind of bigger concerts in the parish hall, which is gorgeous at Christ Episcopal Church. But, you know, there's no downtown venue really other than the churches. So I, I'd love to see, you know, having been here since 93, I moved here from a, a town in northern Alabama that had this absolutely beautiful downtown that was very vibrant. It had lots of arts, arts events, and they had a big jazz festival every spring. And, you know, downtown Temple was not vibrant at that point. And, you know, we, in 2001, we moved out into the country to a ranch, which Tim has a place across the street from me. And so, you know, at that point, you know, you you kind of get in your own little world. You know, I was going to Temple College, my husband was going to Scott and White, and I really wasn't too aware of what was going on downtown until we made this move. And, you know, and I think anybody that has come under the influence of Dan Keller, you know, <laughs> it's like, I mean, what a godsend. He's great. He really is. He's great. great. I mean, even like when we would have a concert, he goes, oh, give me your posters. I'm walking around to the different businesses. I'm just happy to put them up. You know, it's like he's he's so hands-on with everything that's going on downtown. He was the one who suggested to me, he said, this might be something that, you know, you might be able to contribute to. It might be a good fit for you. Why don't you apply for it? Good. So good. here Thank I am. You. Okay. So that's too the, much information, Tim. No, no, actually, <laughs> no, I, I was letting you go. Because, you know, the second question is what skills, talents, or experience would you bring to the position? Okay, and nothing, I mean, else, nothing other than that. So, okay. no, that's, that's I still great. have energy at my old age, and I still do violin. So that's, yeah. Very good. Okay. Very good. So the third question, there's only four of them. Okay. And um, the third question is, as a board member, what um, what do you think that you would like to accomplish? Um, like I said, I'm, I'm really interested in having performance venues downtown and just seeing a little bit more. I, I know that you've developed like visual arts downtown in his becoming, but there's, and there's a lot as far as just kind of having concert things with rock and, and country and um, Mariachi, but there's not been too much classical going on, like any. I think. Almost none. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I mean, I think that we, you know, our presence has probably been the only classical music that you've been having going on downtown, and that's obviously very recent. That would bring in a different mm -hmm. uh, audience. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Also. So. Yeah. A different audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is really good because the symphony has proven that there is. A wider audience for classical music here. It's been exactly. very, very important. Exactly. And the thing is, if you develop an arts community, you know, they come out for these yes. things. And a lot of times the people who come out for those things also have money. And I wasn't going to say that, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we always like money. Well, you know, money does support a lot of things. So, yeah. Very good. Council, do y'all have any questions particularly that kind of struck you for Ms. Ryder? No, I just really like what you can bring to the downtown. Bring it alive. 
this is not a question, but it's a comment. Um, one of my major concerns with developing more downtown, downtown performance venues mm -hmm. is pulling away from the CAC and the Mary Alice Marshall Performing Arts Center. Um, you know, you're not so, using that at all, no, 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 no. College? Well, we aren't for the academy. Okay. We aren't for the academy. Um, but, you know, it, it's interesting because I was actually having this conversation with Teresa Anderson yesterday, is that when we started the symphony, there was, there was some blowback in the community. And, you know, sure. it was like, you know, it's like they were trying, somebody thought, I don't, we don't know where it came from. You know, and so I'm not even going to try to try to guess that, but it was like if we started the symphony, then it would pull away from the CAC. Absolutely, yeah. I, it's the South versus the right, North. exactly, I exactly. Understand. And and as I said, you develop an arts community, and people come, you know, and it's like they don't distinguish whether the concert is at UMHB in their new performance hall. Which is beautiful. Yes. It's not large, but it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Or Temple College or the CAC. You know, the CAC is small. And so is and when they re redid the seats, they took away seats. Yes, they did. Yeah. And really it's the same thing with, with UMHB. Their hall is not large. You know, Temple College is, is the largest one. Yes, it is now. Um, but you know, when we're trying to draw people downtown, you know, it's not like there are so many concerts at Temple College and so many concerts at the CAC and so many at UMHB that somebody, it's rare that somebody's going to have to make choices. Well, I'm glad we had this conversation because it's always something that sort of bothered me. Right. Um, but this, that's good. And I'm glad you you think about it in the academy and downtown Main Street uh, community thinks about it also. Right. Well, absolutely. But like I said, this came up when we started to. Okay. The CAC. Yes, I remember. The that. CAC still is here. The symphony is still here. You know, and so I, I think that you know nobody would even question that the larger. Scale. Okay. Good. And don't we want to think more cosmopolitan? We certainly. That's yeah. that's mm -hmm. part of the focus of Main Street. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, one thing that I was was mentioned, they were talking about the possibility of having a billboard um, on the highway and directing people to downtown and. I said, you know, I don't, they were so, well, I don't know if it's worth it. I said, you know, when you're driving, like if I am on a road trip, if that ever happens again, okay, on a road trip, and you're looking for a place to get dinner, and you don't know if the downtown is 10 miles away mm -hmm. or a mile and a half away. If you see something that downtown is a mile and a half away with a bunch of restaurants, you're more apt to turn off there and go and find something that is not a fast food chain. Yeah, that is fast food though. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. And that was one of the things, Susan, that we talked about. We had dinner the other night with that Hunden group that they brought there before they had the conference um, at the Mayburn. And that's one thing they talked about is multiple venues and multiple types of performance. Good. So yeah, they were they were all they were all for that. So most do you have anything for us? Do you have any questions for us in particular? I don't think so. I, I mean I don't. To be perfectly honest, I don't know that much about the board, mm -hmm. how often it meets, you know, that when it meets. I'm hoping it's not between three and six in the afternoon. So we just looked. So it's the fourth Friday at 9 a.m. Okay. That's that's the uh, guest of meeting. No, it's not set. Right, no, right, no, right. No. It just doesn't hit into my teaching schedule right, right. time, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, very good. I, I definitely think you can bring a unique skill and aspect of this board. Yeah. I, I think we no, I think we all appreciate very much you applying and you know, being willing to serve. Well thank you. So it's always a lot. So yeah well, thank you for that. And to go through this process. This is the first time we've done this as well. So you're literally the first interview yeah. in 91. <laughs> <laughs> One down 90 to go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the competition still blowing. <laughs> so that covers all the board. Yeah. Well, they say you should be first or last, right? That's right. So right. That, yeah. Right. Well, you're you're first. It's like I tell I tell my students, it's like if you're going to make a mistake, make it in the middle of the piece. You have a great start, you have a great end. Yeah. I may say, well, notice something. There you go.
forget it by the end when it's a great end. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you guys very much. Yeah. Thank you. Good yeah. seeing you. Oh, hey, hey, come in. Hi, how are you? I'm good. We know you. No, I do know you. <laughs> I do know you. You can demask if you're comfortable. All right, fine. we're safe, so I feel comfortable. <laughs> so we are, we are actually going to try to stay on time. So we're going to skip the pleasantries. Okay. That works. <laughs> we know you, we love you, but we're going to yes, keep it moving. That sounds <laughs> great. Okay. All right, so. Um, so we have, uh, there's basically four questions, and the fourth one is, do you have any questions for us? So okay. um, so you basically have three questions. The first one is, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving on this board. Sure. Um, uh, so personally, we have lived in Temple for, I think we're going to 21 years now. And uh, military is what brought us to this area. And um, when we had the choice of where to settle, we chose Temple. Uh, and uh, uh, my husband's position has changed. He's not with the military anymore, but he's affiliated with the military.
military um, through contracting, and I was able to get connected with Temple ISD. And uh, so for career reasons, uh, we chose to stay here and make this our home. Uh, we, um, I would love to say we've raised a wonderful daughter, but I don't think we've finished raising her, and I don't think that ever happens. Um, she is wonderful, um, but she isn't raised fully yet. Um, who is, uh, is she her. is almost paid for. She is, uh, well, we're in the really peak of the tuition kind of college tuition stuff, so it doesn't feel that way. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure we will get there. Um, but she is completing her in her second semester at Texas A&M. She's a good babysitter for my granddaughter. She is. She uh, is. Uh, Amelia is her precious, her pride and joy. She loves Amelia. Um, and uh, you know, uh, this is where we chose to make our home. Uh, we did have opportunities to leave for different reasons, um, and we chose to stay here because we love Temple. Uh, we um, uh, love what it stands for. Um, we all we. We lived in an apartment when we first moved to Temple for about nine months, and then we bought our first house on the north side, and then we bought our forever home on the north side about 15 years ago. And uh, so this area is uh, very, very dear to us uh, personally. We've watched a lot of things grow and change over time, and are looking forward to continuing to watch those things um, and progress happen. Very good. Um, what what can you bring to the board? What skills, talent, or experience? Sure. So, um, really, the, my reason for doing this and, and applying is, is personal, um, and because I feel as as someone who supports and appreciates um, as a citizen, uh, Temple uh, very much. But I think that my um, uh, work life helps me to understand how the board process works, um, not only with um, you guys, as far as the council and city staff and their role, and then um, what the board's role for um, uh, the downtown advisory group really being an advisory role. And so I think because of my um, uh, work experience, I have a unique perspective in how those things work together. Um, I have been on uh, this committee. I think initially it was a committee. I don't think initially it was a board uh, with, uh, uh, for downtown since it began. And uh, it has been uh, neat to watch how it's developed. Um, in, initially, it was really just grassroots and just a group of people that were coming together uh, because they cared about downtown and they wanted to see um, our area continue to thrive. And over time with the Main Street application and, and becoming a Main Street town, seeing the way that that has morphed. Um, initially, I felt like our, our board or our committee uh, just gave a lot of ideas. It was kind of a one-way push. This is what we'd love to see. This is what we'd love to see. Um, and then a lot of times um, the city would be like, oh, wait, no, we can't do that because there were reasons and things that we wouldn't have known that we why that wouldn't work. Um, in the last year and a half, maybe a year, um, with city staff becoming very involved in our board, and I've seen a real change in that. Um, and really what I would love to see, which is a, a two-way street. The city has brought a lot of plans and developments and ideas to us to get feedback as stakeholders. And then uh, vice versa, we continue to generate ideas. Any good board needs to be able to do that. But with the city staff as involved as, as they have been, it's allowed us to change gears more quickly as opposed to us getting far down the road in a plan or something that we had in our minds. The city cap staff can say, oh, wait, no, we can't do that because there's this ordinance or this or this ties with something that we're doing um, uh, with an overall project. So it's given us more context to where I think we've been able to be much more focused. And um, uh, what, what I can bring, hopefully, is that experience, having seen that progression, and then um, really hoping to, to keep us focused moving forward. Because I do think that there is a lot of momentum and energy now. Um, who who the from the city has attended those meetings? I'm sure Dan sure. does. Um, yes, Dan, mm -hmm. absolutely. He's there all the time. Yeah. Um, we have had uh, uh, communications department staff here and there sure. visit. We have had um, uh, planning and zoning. Brian has been there really faithfully this last year, right. and, and he's key in, in allowing and, and, and helping guide some of those discussions um, because, uh, yes, they're only ideas, um, uh, but at the same time, he helps us kind of find context for how that can move in. Uh, we have had in the last year representatives from uh, both uh, police department and fire department. Uh, fire department, not every meeting, but 
I would say about 80%, we had the police department there, a spokesperson uh, speaking about some of the safety initiatives and hearing some of the concerns. So there, there have been a lot. Um, uh, several other people from Brian's office have also attended, um, uh, but mainly his department and communications, I would say, are the two. Okay, very good. Anything else on the skills, talent, and experience? Um, I think the other piece of uh, that might might that I might share is I, I do have a unique perspective in that um in my current uh work capacity. I, I kind of am able to see some bigger picture things and I can see the way that um, you know it's all a web and everything all fits together in multiple ways. And so having some of that insight, I think. Um, maybe uh, may allow for some conversations and to help guide some conversations and some plans. And uh, plan development is something that I uh, uh, have, have done well throughout my career. So as we begin to talk about uh, different plans, sometimes people, other people on our committee uh, haven't worked at that level or haven't worked, they've worked at an idea level and maybe a small level, but not what it looks like for something to be uh, implemented larger scale. So I think bringing some of that um, experience uh, it would be helpful as well. Very good. Third question is what would you like to accomplish as a board member? Um, so the the goal of the Temple Main Street uh, program is really uh, to make uh, downtown Temple uh, vital um, and grow it and make it a vital part of Temple as a whole. And uh, that's really where I want to see us go. Uh, this None of this happens overnight. It is a very long process, as all of you are very aware, because been something that I know has been important to the city of Temple for a long time. But what I hope to see is that we can see um, uh, the, the fruits of that labor start to take place, um, that we are able to help implement ideas uh, that really move us forward so that we don't have to go to Georgetown or we don't have to go to wherever, um, uh, Denton, I was there recently in their downtown, that we can have those experiences right here in Temple, Texas. And I, I believe that we're, we're ready all the different pieces and parts are, are pointing in that direction to really uh, make Temple a destination and uh, where people want to uh, come, they want to stay and enjoy. And, and again, for us, because this is our home, um, we want our home to be the very best place it can be. And there's so much potential and, and people downtown, especially as we've worked and gotten to know those vendors and, and business owners, uh, you know, over the last 20 years, you know, their, their heart is, is all about Temple. And, and we just want to make sure that we are helping to make decisions that grow their businesses, that support them as business owners, and then um, that can really help Temple as a whole become that destination and not just, not just a, a, a place to, to live, but a destination for others to enjoy as well. Council, does anybody have any specific questions for Ms. Parks? I think so. Covered it very well. Do you have any questions for I'm sorry, Judy. I'm going back and just see she's very, very, her heart's right into it. You know? <laughs> Well, and that's always a concern I have because, and you guys know in your position, I don't, I, it's tricky because people see you when you've been in a district for the, a long time where you've been in a think, oh, that's a district responsibility or that's a school responsibility. And that's not really, that's not really what this is. I did ask permission because I know it will, <laughs> will require uh, maybe even some time away from work, but this is, this is really bigger than that. And um, like I said, we, we chose here 21 years ago and we can choose, continue to choose here. And um, we do, um, uh, you know, this place is very important to us where we raised our daughter and um, uh, we just love Temple and, and, and that's what we're all about. So um, my, I say we because my husband's all in too, um, uh, which, is, which is also important uh, to have his support. So, Any questions for us? Um, I don't think so. I, I think the, the main thing that I'm excited about is for this to be um, really a uh, seen as a city board now, that, that it's taken that next step, uh, because it, it does, I think, um, uh, change the conversations. I think it changes the communication flow. I think it changes a lot of those things, having it uh, deemed as an official city board. And so I'm excited to see where we go. And like I said, I, I feel like the last year, all that foundation has, has been laid. Um, and, and I know officially we are a city board already, but as we reauthorize and as we um, uh, reapply for our positions to really see it um, from the very beginning in that way, I think will be will be key in moving it forward. 
So I appreciate the opportunity to, to be here and am and, and honored to serve however you see fit. Great. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. Really Thank you. Have a great so, day. Um, Ms. Parks, yes. the, uh, the estimated time mm -hmm. for the, uh, or the, the sort of slotted time uh -huh. that they're thinking is the fourth Friday mm -hmm. of every month. For this. It has been. I but it has been. And, and that is fine, except during a legislative session, because we have legislative calls every Friday uh, with Hugh Shine. But, but typically, I'm able to do that and then jump on um, uh, after. Okay. So, so typically that works well, okay. and, and and I've just talked spoken with Dan so that he knows that um, I, I have to do that initial call, yeah. and then afterwards I'm able to jump on. So every other year it will be a little bit of an issue during uh, legislative okay. session, but yeah, yeah. Okay. perfect. Yes. Thank, right. you, Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It's only every other year. Thank, Thank yeah. goodness <laughs> is right. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Sure. Sir, are you new to Temple? <laughs> yeah, I'm new. Yeah. You know anything about downtown? Just, just move to your <laughs> Just get so, no, nothing about downtown. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> so uh it, pretty simple. We we uh there's four questions. Okay. And the last one is do you have any questions for us? So <laughs> we'll do these pretty quick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh I almost embarrassed asking this, but tell us about yourself and why you're interested in service. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Same question for everybody. All right. Um, I'm well, Patrick. 
uh, uh, partner in Casper Patrick and Associates. Uh, we, uh, as many of you know, or all of you know, we we uh, own a building and operate a business downtown Temple. Um, it used to be at, at, at uh, Central in Maine. Now we we moved a whole block to uh, Adams in Maine. How do you like the new day? We love it. So Not yeah, more more space. So you know, the great news is we ran out of space in the old building. Which was a pretty decent sized building, but um, that's that's good for us and for Temple. So now we can bring more young professionals in to uh, to be downtown, to do things downtown, to be a part of Temple. So that that's really exciting, not only for us but hopefully for the city as well. And we love being downtown. Uh, we are super excited about everything that's going on down there, and, and happy that we're involved with it. That, that's been the most fun for me because I'm the one who's doing most of that. So it's it's been fun to see it grow. But not to see it grow in a in a vacuum. You know, it, the downside for me on that is that since I see it almost daily, you know, I don't get to see the pop. Mm. It, I, I I see that you know little incremental growth, and then and you're really excited about it. But it's really fun to see other people who aren't in, into the weeds in it every day, and they see like Santa Fe Plaza, for example, go from what everybody remembers it to be to what it is today. And uh, so yeah, I'm very excited to be. Where we are downtown, and could couldn't be happier with the new building. Um, surprisingly, you know, so Rick and I bought that. We said we're done. You know, this is less for us. You know, the younger partners, okay, they're going to have to do something, but we're done. And we were meeting the other day, like, uh -oh. <laughs> 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 we might not be done. And that's a good thing too. So, okay, good. Again, sort of embarrassed. What skills, talents, or experience do you bring to the position? Um, your answer list. I mean, yeah. We want to know where all your answer list. Uh, <laughs> well, I think in all of these, especially the Main Street Board, it's, it's good to have an engineer on that board. I mean, you know, bankers are, you know, there's certain groups you always see that people get put on boards, and, you know, engineers and bankers seem to be one of those groups that always get put on there just because of a skill set I think they bring. Um, so I, I think that's always good to have on these, and especially this. Uh, for me, personally, for the Main Street Board, you know, I've been on the committee since it was Jonathan started two by four down. And so then that transitioned into the Main Street Advisory Committee, which I've been on that since that's inception. And so now that you guys are turned into a board, wanted to continue the work that we've started to do on that. Um, but specifically, you know, a lot of experience, obviously, downtown, a lot of experience with projects. Um, all of the stuff, Santa Fe Plaza, Santa Fe Market Trail, First Street, the MLK Festival Grounds, uh, about to revitalize two buildings down there. Um, of course, we've done things that haven't happened yet, like the downtown city center, the two garages, but that are in, in progress. First Street, which I'm super excited about, uh, that that is, you know, again, it's another really fun thing when you're in the weeds to watch it go along, but then when you see it get populated and to see you know, Trina right now, I don't know if you guys went down there, that thing, you know, it's packed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I, I think a lot of that's due to you guys letting those projects go go out. Um, <coughs> and the fact, and, and one of the things that, you know, it also did downtown master plan, so I kind of know everything that's planned to go on downtown. But I think one of the greatest things that's happened, uh, not only just the amenities that we put in there, but you've turned it into a desirable walking space for downtown. Pedestrian facilities got much larger. The lighting is vastly improved. You know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that, so I always tell people, and most y'all probably heard this, the great thing about Rick and I is I'm a morning guy and he's an afternoon guy. So I'm, I'm at the office stupid early and just blowing and going. And, you know, he's he, he takes him a little while to get revved up, but he's still, after, you know, Six o'clock, he's still rolling strong, or I'm starting to fade. Of course, I've had my 12 hours in by then. Um, but it's really awesome to see the just how downtown now is set up. And I think that gives everybody a really safe environment. And I'm, I'm super excited with building these two parking garages. I think it's going to be needed because the other thing I think that's going to happen sooner rather than later, um, you know, I always tell people when I first got to what was then RPK, which is KPA, first thing they told me is go to the Jewish town. You know, they, they, you know, like, okay. And so I saw them do their downtown, which was worse 
than what, what we had before what we started doing. It took them 25 years to get there. It's not gonna take us 25 years. I think you're gonna start seeing these buildings populate. It's just gonna be too valuable of an asset, especially with what we have going at city center. You start putting residents downtown, which every other municipality that we work in, nobody has that. Not to that level. You may have a couple of, you know, people that own buildings and they, they put them themselves from residential space up top, but not true true population downtown. When you get that, I mean, that's people spending money, people shopping, people wanting to go do stuff. I think all those buildings are just going to just blow yeah. up. Mm -hmm. I'm so I'm super excited to see that. Not not only for downtown Temple, but as a property owner downtown, you know, your values of what you have go up as well. You have you also property owners in downtown Georgetown or, or near downtown. <laughs> we're we're on the square in Georgetown. Yeah. Square. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's great. Those are very nice looking offices. And so that's the other thing that, that we had to be a little bit strategic about, which I hope hope and I really believe is going to change too. Um years ago. We go recruit new engineers. It was difficult to get them to come to Temple, and so that's one of the reasons we put an office in in Georgetown. Although we, you know we we're doing work in that area, sure. But it's pretty easy to recruit them to go down there. You know, they love being near us. Um, I think we're going to get to that. <clears throat> and really, I think what City Center is going to see is probably a lot of those young professionals that are working in the downtown area that you know they don't. They just want to walk to everything, every service that they have, to their business, to where they can, their entertainment, their restaurants, all that stuff. So I think we're getting to that point where we can start selling this. But it, it was a struggle for us, really, to say, you know, they go, your office is where? Downtown Temple. Okay. <laughs> and then, but the Austin market allowed us to recruit those guys. Now, what's really weird is, if you, you know, any of y'all with, with young children probably experienced this too. Once they get past that mid twenties to late twenties, yeah. it seems to be going a little longer these days. You know, it, you know, the young the young guys aren't having kids. At, you know, like me, at, you know, twenty two years old, they're waiting until their thirties. But once they start establishing that, now they want to come here. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. They're but I think we're about to get to that point where you're getting both sides of that. Their definition of quality of life changes. It does. It, it does. It does. It's, it's, it's not, I want to go to 6th Street anymore. It's, yeah. Yeah. you know, I want to go have a nice meal that's a little more quiet, you know. Kid friendly. Yeah. Not sit in traffic. Not all. sit in traffic. My yeah. kids be able to walk to school. All yeah, all those things. That's interesting. Did that answer the question I'm trying to remember? No, it does. It does. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think you really, I think you probably answered what you want to accomplish as a board member also in all of that. Um, do you have any particular questions for us? No. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I know all you guys really well, so mm -hmm. um, and I get to talk to you all quite a bit. So no, no, no questions about the Main Street. Uh, <clears throat> I'm assuming. Well, let me, I do have one question, uh, which I asked this question before I even applied. So and, and, and I asked city staff, but you know, one of one of my concerns was that because we do so much work downtown, was this board going to be something that was going to be recommending? specific projects and design projects to council because I'm gonna have to you know either get off the board or accuse myself from everything. And the response I was given was no that that, that wasn't going to be the purpose of this board. Um, so that is a question. Do y'all see that as the purpose of this board? You know I really I think one of the reasons why we're going through this board and commission process is um, there were a lot of boards that um, they thought that their main job was to push stuff up to council. Those were the active boards. The inactive boards weren't doing anything. They were just yeah. sort of swimming in circles. And so the, the purpose of kind of the three constitution of boards and commissions is to begin to, with executive staff and council, be, begin to push projects and ideas into the boards. So that the boards are ultimately an arm of the council and staff to accomplish our strategic so, um, and so I have a question for you is, so as a board member, um, and as, as those strategies are being pushed down, do you see that, because chances are y'all, your firm's gonna end up working on a lot of those, those projects anyway. Right. Do you see a need to have an engineer sitting on that board as things are just 
beginning to be born, these ideas are just starting, or really is that something that you think the board should flesh out with obviously with council's help and then ultimately land on your desk as a project? Does that, does that question make sense? Yeah, it does. <clears throat> so I think that it should be something that, that is flushed out and then lands on our desk rather than you just have an engineer sitting on the board. I, I think, you know, I don't think it's a bad idea to have an engineer sit on the board, just, you know, and they, they like me on there because I can also give them updates and presentations on all the stuff that we're doing downtown. And so, you know, That's matter fact, you, do anyway. you know, Dan asked me if they kill if you get selected, <laughs> would you would you mind, you know, giving me that giving us an update on everything that's going on downtown, where you are, what's coming next, time frames, all those things. And I think they might see all that. Yeah. But you would do that anyway. I would, yeah. Well, he said, well, if you don't get selected, were you still doing it? I said, absolutely. Yeah. Because all I have to do is, you know, I just have to walk across the street. Right. I don't see any problem with you having to recuse yourself if that occurred. I mean, we we have to recuse ourselves from time to time. It's right. just not an issue. We're not a huge community. community. Um, and the expertise and ideas and history you bring are, and location you bring are really important. Yeah, and you know, I, I don't see this. I see this board as being that advisory board and it's pushing things up to council. But you know, they don't. It's not like RZ who has a massive budget. Right. You know, they they've got a pot of money to do things with. So I, I thought this would be more as an idea board that gets pushed up to to council so that you guys can make decisions and and consider things rather than a board that is you know, pushing design projects out. Right. And contracts with the RZ, I don't see this board pushing design projects so much. That's already been right. done, right? But I do see it pushing more programming to attract people to downtown to take advantage of the things that are being done. In case you see at a point in time, downtown is going to be quote done, and the private sector is going to come in and finish. And it changes the whole dynamics of an engineering firm, an architectural firm being on this board. Because then it's more programming kind of approach. At least that's how I look at it. Right. And we're, you know, I agree with you 100%. We're, we're in the process of doing the downtown. It's called downtown neighborhood planning district right, right now, but it's really just the downtown district. And and uh, my vision for that is because there's there's not if you look at the boundary there's not a ton of residents and if there are some and we have we brought those people in there to be part of the focus group but to me the whole point of that is making downtown chief destination right. and you know and, and how I when staff was asking me about that I said you know what I want to see is and it, not all the times so I'm them all the time but that, you know and I know you do it anyway but somebody like Wendell or John Keeler or Bob Browder. They, they go ahead and drive past Beer's place and keep heading to downtown because that is the, it's such a destination. Right? That's where they want to go. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting there. Um, I know that we had one focus group on that and they said, parking keeps coming up. Mm -hmm. And you know, my response to that has always been, you know, when, when you make, and it's in the plan, and if you guys had a blank check, you'd do it tomorrow, mm -hmm. but you don't. And that's what yes, I tell people too. Yeah, it, it'd be done. Right, but we don't have a blank check. We don't have all the money in the world. If I go over my 15 minutes, just kick me out. Uh, but if you go walk down First Street right now, you know, the pedestrian facilities are enhanced, it's very well lit up, it looks pretty. It's someplace you want to walk. When you I think when you do that all of downtown, people are gonna to want to park their car and just walk. Mm -hmm. You know, now it's you know two weeks ago and it's two degrees and brand yeah. whatever. Yeah, okay, no. They don't have the domain either. Do what? Yeah. Those people were walking. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 But if you, I think if you get to that when we not not yet, when we get to that point, I think people are going to be super happy to park in one of those garages and just explore all the downtown on foot because it's such a nice walking space and it you know it looks it looks great and if it's an evening or you know where it's well lit they feel safe and so I think the parking questions probably somewhat go away. I think they never completely go away. But I think it somewhat goes away just because they're happy to go walk and explore. Yeah. A little bit off topic. Um, but the, that extra co parking garage, mm -hmm. how many spaces is that estimated? 235. And then the uh, the Hon 415. Okay. We're talking about 650 spaces. Right. Downtown. And that's quite a bit. Mm -hmm. If you figure three people a car. Yeah. Right. Two or three people a car. A ton of people. And you still have your other, other spaces all through downtown. There's going to be ample parking at least for a while. Correct. When, if you think about even Santa Fe Plaza, happening over there, 
Yeah. And for weekend traffic, you know, that's, and that's a nice walk. Yeah. Oh, yes, absolutely. One of the best parties of the five years, let's say, was the opening center, uh, testing of the fountains. Yes. It was such a nice event. It was. <clears throat> and and the, you all did, did, did that party. It was great. Yeah. And, and so I'm, that's a, I'm excited to, I guess we officially opened up yesterday, officially. Uh, so yeah. I'm excited for, you know, us to get back to the point where it back to be an event center. Yes. You know, that was, that was the saddest thing about COVID is, you know, we mm -hmm. had the first few things and weren't quite done yet. And, and the first events that we had out there were so, you know, so fun, so well attended. And then we just had to shut it down. I'm excited to see that open back up. And, and, and that'll bring, so, you know, I think that'll bring a lot of, of uh, retail to downtown patrons. But I've also heard from several, you know, like Bruce Baseball Hard, that's it. He said, Crossroads, when y'all have a tournament out there, their place goes nuts. Mm -hmm. So that's good to hear. That is great. Yeah. yeah. It really is. Well, I hope that when, as Wendell said, downtown is finished, quote unquote, yeah. that we all are still alive and, and participating, that we move east and the Main Street Committee would be very involved with, or the board would be very involved with ideas of how we go, how you affect East, because East is, is there's a lot to do that could be done and right. will be affected by this. Yeah, and you know, you know, BJ's got, they have their brewery out there, and of course they're open, limited, but, and I'm sure all of y'all toured this, but when we were doing the downtown master plan, what I thought one of the coolest buildings that we had was, was the depot, yeah. you know, 514. Yeah. And Hunden mentioned that too. You went out? Hunden mentioned that yes. also. It, it, that is a really cool. It yeah, is. I, I should know this. City owns it. Yeah. They use it for storage now. Yeah. 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 It, I mean, but if you haven't been through there, you get a chance. It's, you know, we did it, you know, it was back in 14, but that thing is just a cool thing. Yeah. I've not been in. The things that could be done, the ideas. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, but that helps you kind of move these. Oh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Happen. It does. Okay. So, quick question off topic again. We were looking at lighting. Uh, for the depot last night, mm -hmm. Buford and Melinda. Is the depot part of the master lighting plan on top of the building? It is. Okay, I knew the other two were, but we questioned if the depot As was a matter of fact, so we, we've been It's not pushing, a flat roof. Right, we've been pushing that real hard. Um, and, and of course, if we can do that through by board, so it'll go fast. And we've already got everything rolling. Um, but he's, uh, that group is coming to do a sample of buildings so they can finalize their stuff by board and that purchasing can go out to get the contract done. But, but that's one of the buildings they're going to get on top of the roof and inspect. Okay. So, so I drill we'll have all yeah. three. So, okay. you know, GIC admin building, um, the Santa Fe Business Center, and the depot hall. Mm -hmm. okay. A couple of weeks ago, I drove through uh, Hamilton. I think it was Hamilton. Pretty sure it was. About nine o'clock at night. You know, they have that pretty little square that you go through, like if you're heading out toward Avalon. And they've done that down there. All those buildings around the square are lit up. And it's, it's just beautiful. Yeah, really. it makes a big difference. It we, does. You know, it's very really warm. It's inviting. You know, yes, inviting. That's the word. It is inviting. We're going to be it's LED, big. new technology, all kind of stuff like that. Georgetown's is part of the old, you know, almost the big Christmas light bulb type things. Okay. Uh, downtown Brian just did it. And they use the same group that, that we're going to use. So I mean, they've done a lot of, of downtown areas with that, but yeah, but we're going to get. So you love Brian. They just came out with new technology for the LEDs. So I think I think you'll be super excited when that comes. Yeah, just fruition. just yeah. remembering when we put them in, they'll come out with new technology. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's funny. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to got to go with what you go with. Yeah. All right. Anything else for Mr. Casper? I do that half the time. It's I'm okay. Sorry. Well, I don't know why. We're, we're, we're almost one. <laughs> you know, guys heard Patrick, you just rolled off the desk. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll call Rick and Patrick. So there you go. Do that. <laughs> he'll, be okay, he'll be okay with it. You know, all the time. I'm sorry. Anything else? I don't think so. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yes. Thanks for yeah. being downtown. Thanks for keeping your second building downtown. That was really important. It was, it was important for us. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were excited when that thing came available. We did not, we weren't leaving downtown. We were trying to figure out how to, how we, we, were out, we were out of space. So. Yeah. Well, we're glad to hear you think maybe you're out of space again and you can expand a little. You can have an ancillary building downtown. Well, you know, Bruce, east. Bruce and Bo just redid the, the 
one right next to our parking lot or half our parking lot. Thomas owns half, we own half. But so, you know, <laughs> that might be a solution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, unless y'all want to give up the old historic post office next door. Uh, no. I didn't figure you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was that building? Y'all really been at City Hall, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. No, we don't <laughs> wait that long. <laughs> There's space in buildings east. Okay. Cool. That are not far from yeah, we'll, we'll look east. Look, easy walk, good <laughs> ancillary. Yeah. Susan's got a plan for you already. I know. Uh, I'll I'll we'll, take, we'll take all the help we can get. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Patrick. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
I could uh, work towards uh, helping the downtown area. And I just really like being part of the community that I'm in. Um, and in Colorado Springs, we worked on things like the bike, uh, rent a bike thing that they had just started, which I believe Temple is working on. The scooters. The scooters. Yeah, it's been yeah. talked about. Okay. Um, and then also just kind of revitalizing alleyways and the downtowns for those as well. And I'm just excited to get started, um, get kind of into Temple's downtown. Uh, I am on the Main Street Design Committee, um, which they meet at our office each month, which has been kind of fun to be a part of. Um, and I I definitely bothered Tanya Reed to get a job with, <laughs> with their <laughs> office because I knew that they were kind of in the downtown area and I really liked the downtown area when we uh, first moved out here. Um, I've enjoyed trying to get our military friends to come downtown and enjoy some of the some of the perks that are there because I know it's trying to be revitalized and bring people back into the area. So I just enjoy enjoy doing that. <laughs> do you like your new building downtown? I do, yeah. It looks really nice. That's really great. I tried to live in downtown Temple, but I didn't get that house. But if I did, I would have been three yeah. minutes away from that house. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's good. Okay, bring well, We're sorry you didn't get the house. They look really cute. Oh. <laughs> there will be others. There will. We got, we got a pretty cute house down by uh, Lions Park, though. So. Oh, good. Good. Okay, what's, uh, and you've kind of already answered this, I think, what skills, talents, or experience, you've definitely answered the experience part, when you bring to this position? Um, yeah, mostly just with the architecture background, and then in Colorado Springs, we also did some, uh, our office had a planning department, which I was able to help out in as well, so I have a little bit of background with. So did you work for the city of Colorado Springs? No, I worked for um, a uh, just another architecture firm okay. who works with a lot of municipal projects. I got you. Um, and so I was able to take part in those projects from that route there. But um, yes, so architecture, design, um, kind of rendering and making like visualizing kind of what, or while well, creating like rendered visualizations of what you kind of want to see as progress and things like that. Done a lot of so. good. How long have you been here? Um, just over a year, so right before COVID. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> yeah, so I haven't had <laughs> the greatest of or been able to get everywhere as much as I would have liked, but now that things are opening back up, hopefully. Yep. Definitely. How long do you like you staying here? Um, at the least two to three years, and but. We're thinking about maybe getting out of the army so possibly longer than that. So it depends on what my husband decides to do, but maybe longer. I really like my job, so hopefully longer. <laughs> I love that comment. We are considering. I love out that the army. too. <laughs> I realize that I said that. that. Is I am not in the army. That's the way it should be. Yeah, you are. Yeah. 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 That's okay. the way it should be. You should focus. Yeah. <laughs> Because you go with it when y'all pack up and move, right? I do. I and mean, we were in it's Arizona. like you're there too. Yes. We were in the middle of nowhere, Arizona for like six months. That was not my favorite location. So that's my paradise. Yeah, <laughs> I came here and I was like, oh my gosh, there's grass and trees. <laughs> oh, there were until the ash storm. Oh yeah. Well then that happened, yeah. <laughs> um, so what would you like to accomplish as a board member? Is there anything sort of overarching that on that board that you're really passionate about? Um, just based on, I did attend a couple of the meetings virtually, um, the last couple and then uh, also being on the design committee, I, I really enjoy just doing the visualization part and kind of, um, just giving my perspective, especially from what other cities that I've lived in have done, um, what's worked and what hasn't worked for them. Um, and just being able to try and bring more people into downtown Temple and telling like get some of the military people to come on down here. Cause I know a lot of them do live in Temple and a lot of our friends don't really know about the downtown area, right. but um, 
they go to kind of the 31st Street area. So I've been trying to get them to come down. So I guess my passion would be the visualization and then getting doing what I can to get the people that I know, even though I haven't been here for that long, to kind of come and enjoy the downtown. You know, there are lots of people who have lived in Temple almost their whole lives and they don't know downtown <laughs> or the new downtown. Let's put it yeah. that way. They don't know the things that changed downtown. They just saw downtown deteriorate and stop coming. Mm -hmm. So you bringing a whole different group is wonderful, <clears throat> really wonderful. Well, I think they would be really interested in, in that portion, especially because I don't think a lot of people who come to Fort Hood want to be in, live in Colleen. I don't think there's a ton there. It's not a terrible place, <laughs> but, I think you're right. <laughs> but I don't think there's a ton there. And I think a lot of people that can do it would rather be in Temple, especially when they have spouses who want to work and things like that. And there's just more opportunities here. So I think getting, like putting more attention on bringing some of them here would be helpful for sure. Do you have uh, a question for us? Anything that's... Um, Maybe more on like the history of the downtown, like you started to talk about since I'm not entirely familiar with being here for a long period of time. How far back do you want to go? Yeah, yeah when was that our <laughs> resident <laughs> story? When was it? When was it? Uh, thriving, thriving, right? Yeah. Up until the Temple Mall was built. <clears throat> and, and seriously, when Scott and White moved 80? out of downtown and built on the hill where they come in, uh -huh. Scott and White was located. Oh, okay. And they moved out on the hill in the, in the early 60s. And then the mall came in the 70s, fairly early 70s, yeah. I think. That became the commerce center of Temple versus the downtown. Because prior to that, uh, men's shops, ladies' uh, shops, all kind of retail was located in downtown. Sears, Anthony's. Yeah, no. all those. Cheese was an old department Cheese, store. Yeah. Cheese really? Brothers Steakhouse. That's, That's where that I comes from. It. <laughs> so that all just it all withered on the vine because the, the new shiny object, the mall, mm -hmm. got, got all the attention. And so, you know, the, the thing is, something has to be broken yeah. before you fix it. Well, the downtown Temple got broken. Mm -hmm. Now it's in the process of being fixed. Yeah. I think that's awesome. And I'm from a small town, so I prefer the, like the downtown area than going to like the chains and things out on, I guess it's 31st Street. Is that where all of that is? Yes. Yeah. Um, so. so you're a smidge over time, but I've got a question for you. So give us a couple of minutes. Okay. Whenever you talk about revitalizing alleyways. Yeah. That's not something we hear a lot. Um, tell us a, just a little bit about that. Okay, well, in Colorado, because I like that concept that we're going to have a, a successful downtown. People don't necessarily need to drive by and see the, the wires and the dumpsters. Yeah. Um, well, in Colorado Springs, when our office was asked to do some of the designs of, of some of their darker alleyways that they wanted to make look a little bit happier, mm -hmm. um, some of the things that we did were either kind of paint some of the dumpsters, dumpsters or things like that, maybe even put murals on the walls there um the important one was definitely lighting whether it was like hanging lights or something kind of artsy or some other kind of like lighting just to make it more inviting and the ones that they really um focused mostly on were uh alleyways that kind of led from one one part of the city to another part of the, like, part of the city path. that might mm -hmm. be a walking right. path um and then other ones maybe just dress them up a little bit make sure that they were clean, but really just kind of pick the most important alleyways that could be walkways and make those little projects. Great idea. Just kind of each of them be their own separate yeah. appeal. So they have I a like jazz that. festival every summer um, downtown. Pardon? And they have a jazz festival. Yeah, sure. And um, they use the, some of the wider alleyways for like artists to set up a little, mm -hmm. you know, a little kiosk, well, not kiosk, but you know, a little um, pop up, and yeah, you know, I mean, so they could be used, and it becomes part of you know the larger venue yeah. that was you know, that takes place in a parking lot. So that's just always been a bit interesting. Good idea. Yeah. I like the way you phrased. I can't remember the word you used, but the lighting something eclectic or different. You you had a word that was I mean, I've seen it. Hard, to, yeah, hard to do. Good, and that that would be so nice to have. Some individual different 
artsy. Yeah, I think I feel like it's artsy people that seem to be drawn first to a downtown area. Somebody's going to make dumpsters. Do what? Do we need somebody willing to paint dumpsters, right? That's the hard to But but oh, we did it. Yeah, yeah. the high yeah. school. Yeah. Yeah. You part of that? Just how you raise your hand. You oh, I that? guess that was a good idea. Oh, okay. yeah. But the <laughs> art classes at the high school, Christina, I think it's her name at the high school, the head of uh, the arts. I've forgotten her name. That's something she's interested in doing. When she was hired, she expressed an interest in getting classes that would do murals on dumpsters and things like that. It's, it's almost free labor, if you will, and artsy kids. Yeah. Any more questions for Ms. Willoughby, or do you have any for us? Um, I think <laughs> Thank you so much for thank coming. You. Thank you. I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate it. Yeah, I your interest. Yeah, thank you, Ed. And you know, Tanya knows everything there is to know. I like you. I asked her lots of questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's She's been here forever and knows ins and outs. She has hands, right? <laughs> yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dan. All right, well, let's just dig in. Um, we're running a little bit behind. So uh, pretty simple. We've got three questions for you, and then we're going to ask you if you have any questions for us. Okay. So um, first one is, uh, if you would, please, we know you, but tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving. Well, um, I grew up here, I guess, in Temple. I went to Belton School District, Belton High School, and always felt in high school I kind of hung out with more kids in Temple than I did in Belton. I wanted to be in Temple. Our family's in, involved in Temple. Went to college at AM. Um, went and worked in Dallas and Minnesota for a while. And then one day I just didn't really like waking up at 5 a.m. within a five minute window, 10 minute window. If I didn't leave the house mm -hmm. on time, I'd be 30 minutes late yeah. or I was 30 minutes early. So. I was just wondering why I was doing all this when I have, you know, a family business that I can get into and my family being back here. So I came back, worked with Lloyd Thomas, worked with Will Morris. I still work with Will and I'm currently at Johnny's Cleaners with my father. Um, I don't think my work defines me, but I, I put a lot of time in my work. I try to be as diligent as possible. Um, I don't think I'd be here, you know, 18, 20 years old. I was pretty, pretty 
motivated, but I was a little bit wild. And now I feel like all my failures, all the dumb stuff that I did, all the things that I've learned about myself, I feel like I'm somewhat mature for a 29 year old person enough to um, want to come back and and see Temple be better than what it was um, when I was growing up. I remember downtown was just downtown. It's always seemed fine to me um, being at the cleaners since I was a kid. But when you step back and realize that people don't feel safe, some women don't feel safe going downtown after dark and things like that. I just think that the community, there's any way that I could help um, in any facet, you know, that'd be my objective. You mean currently serve on the dad tap committee? No, I don't. I go to some of the meetings with Dan Keller. Okay. But I'm not on that committee. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought you were. You've been back in Tipo how long now? Since 2017, maybe. Okay. Four or five years. Okay. What's your degree in? It was industrial distribution. It was an engineering. Um, I have a minor in business, but I think I learned more out of college than <laughs> in college. Mm-hmm. In that front street, that's where I work. <laughs> yeah. And going to a and we were always drinking and having a good time going to football games and doing dumb stuff. So we learned, but, you know, there's it was definitely a, a good college experience, I guess. Yeah. Sometimes we grew up in spite of ourselves. We'd be all right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so, did you uh, did you answer the part of the question where we asked um, why you're interested in serving? Well, my family's been here for about well, let me. My family's been here for a while. Um, I just remember stories about my grandfather, you know, working and digging through the trash for, for food in the Great Depression. I'm sure a lot of our families did the same thing. And um, Temple's been really good for my family. Um, and if there's a way that I could give back, that's kind of the purpose. I know a lot of people in Temple grew up around the church. And I've decided to come back. I, that's one of my problems with the area. I think we don't retain enough educated young folks mm. to come back. But I'm not saying I'm a genius, but hopefully I've learned something in college. I've learned something in my business class where I can apply that to the public or, or listen to the public. You're third generation, right? So, yeah, I guess you kind of answered the second question, which is what skills, talent, or experience would you bring to the position? Do you have anything else to add there? So working in commercial real estate, I just, I I did that for a while. It was difficult at first, um, not making any money, having to live, you know, with my father. I think the first year that works with uh, Aldridge Thomas, I made probably about $4,000. And um, it just really made me stick to the necessities in life. Um, Having to deal with people that are not always nice to you or that want something from you or you want something from them. And you have to, you, you can't carry yourself in a way that most people can. You have to be professional and understand what you're saying and what, understand what people are telling you. I don't do that all the time very well, but <laughs> the times that I don't, I feel like I've learned from. Being at the cleaners is totally different. You're dealing with customers every day. My biggest thing that I don't like at cleaners is the small talk. It gets repetitive. And so sometimes you don't have the conversations that we're having right now where you just talk, but you don't really expect that out of a 30 second conversation that somebody comes in and brings a garment. But, you know, everything that we do at the cleaners and hopefully everything, you know, that we do on the real estate side, you want to treat people with respect. Um, and, you know, your actions speak more than I think your words do. And if we give a good product and a good service to somebody, then I think that's going to 
bring people together and bring us more business. Um, but just whether it's serving someone on the real estate side or the cleaner side, having people cry, having people cry of emotion, happy emotion, or just being relieved that, you know, you sold this building for me that no one could sell. You know, it's been on the market for eight years. Now I can retire. Now I can give some to my, my daughter. Now she's getting married, things like that. That's, that's what makes me feel really good. Do you, um, do you have any questions for us? Well, I was kind of confused. I, it said that it was the main street and then I applied for the planning and zoning. I'm not entirely sure what I'm being. This is main street. Okay. Yeah. So I know, understand it's a, it's a newer organization. I think Joe Shepard opened that up in 2017 or 2018. Um, it's about the timing. What what is when we got the Main Street as a historic designation? That would be about 2017. What what would you say is your biggest interest between the two, planning and zoning or Main Street? And I'm just asking. Can I mean, you bring that in the front right? So there's so you said you applied for two boards. You weren't sure what you were here for. Which, which one? Okay. So of, of your general interest, talk about commercial real estate. Um, is is your larger interest probably going to fall at, at, with the planning and zoning board or with the Main Street Advisory Board? If you can serve on one of those. But well, when I got back here, my biggest, like, I, when I'd go to city council meetings or, or planning and zoning meetings, that's, you know, I, I really wanted to be involved in that. Okay. I thought that was really nice. But, you know, I don't want to say that I'll only do one thing because sure. I'm open for however I can serve, but you know, we have a, a good interest in downtown. Mm -hmm. Downtown hasn't always looked the way it ha has now. And we have, you know, a few key members in downtown to thank for that, as well as the city initiatives. So I think both I think both are are suit my interests, but Planning and zoning, I just, the people that come to planning and zoning, they're worried, they're upset that a developer is gonna put in an apartment right here and create more traffic for their kids to go through their thoroughfare. Um, I'm not entirely sure, that's why I'm here is to ask you a question on how I can serve the Main Street Board. I'm not familiar with the Main Street Board as I would be planning and zoning, but I'm sure both have their impact. Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Yeah. And with you guys having a business downtown, um, you know, ultimately our, our goal is to, uh, to continue to develop downtown and any business that's situated down there now would be, you know, uh, you know, obviously an important part of the planning process. So, so, you know, and, but if you're, you're interested in real estate also, I think you could, you know, it would be appropriate based on your skill set to, uh, you know, for either one of those to work. So. We appreciate it. So how would I be able to make a difference? And how would I be able to uh, be a positive asset? What would be the daily daily undertaking for you? Well, thankfully it won't be daily. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Thankfully for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, again, just just the experience. Uh, I am, um, you know, I, I know my neighborhood where my office is, but I, I'm not downtown. So I can't really bring a lot of insight to that as a business person that would serve on a board. And um, so, uh, you know, just your, your daily experience, really in, in both aspects, in your real estate ventures, as well as, uh, you know, owning a business downtown, working downtown, and knowing the people that are downtown. So, you know, I, I think that you would uh, fit both places. And then um, it's an advisory board. So um, we would be asking that, that board, obviously, then to, to advise the city on, on you know the moves and the uh, changes that are coming downtown that you guys see, these city leaders wouldn't necessarily. I think that'd be helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have Absolutely. a lot of cust customers that come in concerned or ask general questions, but I think the whole aura of downtown is positive and it's on the incline. And not, yeah. you know, there's definitely movement. There. <laughs> yeah. Well, you are uniquely positioned. You have a foot in both camps. You have downtown business ownership 
you interact with people from downtown all day, but you got real estate experience, which on a PNZ side would help you understand some of the planning and zoning issues. So I think you're uniquely positioned to be a candidate for either one of them. I, I appreciate that assessment. What, what do you, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. You've, your family's been here for a long time, third generation. You've known downtown your whole life. And you see things that are beginning to change. Do you see things that, what ideas do you have or thoughts do you have about things for downtown that, that are coming or not coming? So yesterday we were in a design committee with, I, I believe, the Main Street organization led by Dan Keller and uh, Nancy Glover. And some of the topics that we talked about were lighting, public restrooms, um, and I guess just the beautification of the area. I think that all takes time, but you know, the biggest if women are un feel unsafe being down there at, at night, I think there needs to be something about that. Okay, so either lighting, um, we have some riffraff, I wouldn't say crime, but there are some homeless people that we have a guy that I've actually made friends with that lives actually behind our cleaners. And um, he's in a wheelchair. I haven't seen him in a while, but you know, some of these guys are are there one day and then mentally not there the other. Sure. And so whatever we do for them, I'm not sure if that's gonna be enough. They need to see a doctor. But having public restrooms, having lighting, having having sidewalks that are not going to make someone trip, break a hip, and sue the city would be... I'm all into broken hips. <laughs> Drake McLean used to eat at one of our buildings, and that's when Vinny used to be there at Dibs. Yes. And that being, you know, in, in high school or whatever, I'd always ask myself, this this man's worth X amount of money. He comes to eat... There's a lot of exes. Yeah, <laughs> he comes to get in this little rinky dink place that looks like that. And the sidewalk is just all uneven. And if he were to fall one day, that is so embarrassing. And he, good thing he has the medical coverage and the amount of money to cover that. But you just, if I were going to, if I was one of your age and had a daughter or had a son, and let's go take prom pictures. Where are you going to take the at a downtown? Probably Georgetown or Slayo, not Temple. So I think we're on our way. It it you need more people to want to invest and and, and want to have their business there. But you know, it's the chicken or the egg concept, right? So I think if we put a little bit better infrastructure, what we're doing now, I think people are going to come, and I think that's what's really happening. Good. Thanks for your perspective. Anything else? I don't know anything else. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sorry you made it such a big part. No, it's hopefully everything will be fine. It's just this life, right? It's going to be okay. It is. What Wendell said is very true. It's leaps and bounds. Progress. Yeah, you uh, so you never know when the last time you're going to see somebody. And uh, the last time I saw one of my particular cousins, it wasn't on a good note. You know, I still love her, but what happened that day? You just never think that something like that would happen. And I haven't been emotional at all.
Just like cheese. I'm so used to it, I don't think it's going to go away. No. Eventually, it will. Yeah, eventually. So thanks for being here. We all, does everybody know Jacob? Trinos, Bird Creek? Hi, everybody. Hi. Yeah. I walked into his restaurant the other day after he saw me at his other restaurant. And as he drove by, he said, how much money are you going to give me this week? <laughs> <laughs> He's paying so, the light bills. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. The Davis is like pizza and burgers. So, so we're going to uh, cut through the pleasantries. Sure. Just off right in if you yeah. have one. So, um, and you really know kind of through the conversations, um, we're going to ask you three questions, and those are, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving. What skills, talents, and experience do you bring to the position, and what do you hope to accomplish as a board member? So, answer those one at a time. Okay. Or what's kind of happened is, you know, as people have talked about all three categories can answer. But the first question is, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving. Um, well, I mean, I've, I've been... Uh... I've been the, on this board since it kind of came to to fruition. I guess how long? Two and a half years ago is when we started talking about it. When Dan Dan came along and became the Main Street Manager, uh, that's when we started this thing. It was you know it wasn't under the City Council or anything like that, so it wasn't governed by right. you know it was all suggestion based and things like that. So I was always the um, Joe started as the chairman, and then last year I was voted in as the chairman. I sat as the chairman for the last year on this board. Um, so I think that gives me some qualification, uh, just having a lot of familiarity with the board and the members and, and kind of the mission statements, and being involved in the the uh, the writing of those uh, mission statements and kind of what, what the purpose of the board was. Um, on top of that, I am a stakeholder, I'm, a, I'm an operator in downtown and, and you know, everything that we do primarily revolves around that area. So it's pretty important that um, the voices are heard from the stakeholders and the business owners and, and operators that are down there. So um, I don't, I don't know that there's much more. It's pretty imperative that I that I am on this board. It's, it's even if it's just an advisory position or whatever. I'd love to be the chairman again to kind of lead it through the first year under the guidance of this, the city council, um, but, you know, it's, I think, like we all are, we're pretty busy with, with what we're doing, but um, I do tend to make enough time for all this kind of stuff, because it's important. It's important to the, to the growth of my businesses and my future businesses and the prospects of what we're doing, other properties in downtown, so um, that should answer that question, hopefully. Mm -hmm. What skills, talent, or experience would you bring to the position? Um, maybe the knowledge base of the actual board itself. Um, on top of that, you know, uh, real estate in downtown and how things operate and, you know, demographics of the way things are happening and where money could potentially be allocated and making suggestions based on those type, types of things. Um, I work seven days a week in the, in the environment and uh, I bring in a lot of uh, the information that I, that I see and I can bridge a lot of gaps between um, maybe personal connections where we can where we can figure things out um, as we have board meetings. So um, maybe just that I've built a lot of really 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 strong bridges, and it tends to always help with this committee because we can quickly find out uh, how to connect A and B. And I'm not asking you for any um, you know names or anything like that. Do you feel like that current board works well together? Um, I think that we've always worked well together. Uh, yeah, I think sometimes Is it relevant the board itself mm -hmm. to to you to your businesses and to other businesses, or is it the relevant? To it, it's it's definitely relevant. Whether or not we have goals that are heard and achieved is another thing yeah. entirely. It's not for a lack of effort. Um, you know, we we've done monthly meetings even through COVID. We we stuck to it. We uh, we did everything we we're supposed to do. We at subcommittees on the ground gathering information or, or putting things together and uh, the problem is, is a lot of the, a lot of the time the things uh, fall on deaf ears and I think whole, whole city ears yeah but it wasn't it wasn't a, a city recognized board you know sure. until this point so sure. there were recommendations to staff but it wasn't it wasn't information that was being uh, directly sent up and I think that with this opportunity you know after uh, a few months ago, whenever it was adopted as a, an actual board where we can 
speak directly to you guys. I think that gives us a whole lot more uh, opportunity to make real changes. And I mean, I've made requests in the past, like budget requests for advertising and things like that. And I think the problem, the problem that we're having with these sub boards or these boards that are very pinpointed to certain areas is that a lot of times decisions get made without going through the, the channels because we weren't really a recognized board here or that there weren't terms in place for this or that. Um, and what I think the hope is, is that the relevancy of this program is seen by you guys and we can actually start making things happen. So yes, yes and no. The board is relevant. Has it been super relevant to you all? Has it been something on y'all's radar to this point? Okay. Well, obviously, you know, the city is investing billions mm -hmm. downtown. Yep. And y'all have invested Absolutely. a lot. And so, um, as far as infrastructure changes, I don't think anybody's doubting what the city right. put in. That's not right. what I'm saying. I think it's more along the lines of how are we promoting uh -huh. traffic? Right. Um, and that's such an important part of developing an area. You could dump billions into it. It wouldn't really matter if you're not diverting the right amount of traffic. And you're not the first person to say that this so, morning. Well, it's it's true. I mean, yeah. You can't get them down there. That was the point. You know, it's, it's a good point. A good example is the food truck park. Is the what? The food truck park. Yes. Two point one million dollars spent on a food truck park that does that has two trucks in it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I tried. I, I sat down with the parks and I told them, you know, my recommendations and, and all that kind of stuff, and it all comes down to advertising. So the, the disconnect, I think, with all of these boards is probably the marketing. Has that been uh, stalled <laughs> because of COVID? No. It's stalled before COVID. I mean, businesses right. in general are not stalled from COVID, I can tell you. First. No, I mean the food truck part. Well, that's businesses. You're relying on small businesses. None, none of that has been stalled. So it's marketing. Absolutely, it's okay. And then we've also got some other things that need to get tied up with um, other things that have happened with the food truck stuff. You know, there's a lot of effort to put into to operate to make up very, very small margins mm -hmm. for a food truck. Or oh, other. sure. And things have gotten a little, you know, the belt's been tightened on those guys even recently. So mm -hmm. it's no surprise that they're not they're not jumping in line to be a food truck. The, the new um, ordinances. Mm -hmm. Which I get, they're good, they're they're necessary, but they they were uh, very abrupt. It wasn't they a lot of abrupt. We did make a mistake. Yeah, and I mean that was that was it recognized. Was that, for that, sure. that was recognized. It's just it's one of the, it's just it's kind of indicative of a lot of the things that happen, like marketing strategies that don't go through the right channels, or everyone finds out that they're spending X amount of dollars on a campaign that no one knows about. It's not really centric to anything. So. I've been told downtown's been the beneficiary uh, talking about marketing and attracting people. Um, Crossroads Park and some of the big activities that happen out there. A lot of parents and kids come downtown. And do you see that? Well, Is I that did that. Thing? I went to Crossroads every day. I drew them in. I did what I could. I've got, I've got billboards placed right over there on Adams just so that we can get people downtown to put my posters on. So you have seen a benefit? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, but it's very specifically to Saturdays at Trino, yeah. not so much. Uh, we're not getting it at Bird Creek or anything like that. So mm. it's kids go play. They got a little bit of energy left. They come play on the playground. It's a place that you can go. So, I mean, our business strategy has always been pretty pinpoint on certain aspects of the community or demographically speaking, maybe what we think can make the most money by focusing, like, for example, a playground. Playgrounds. It's very focused on family orientation and, and trying to get people from certain sections of the city that may not know about us or may not know downtown and just draw them in. So um, I definitely have seen some cross city uh, pickup here in the last maybe six to eight months. Bird Creek is, we're at a point now where Bird Creek may be moving because our Saturday, Sunday brunches are so uh, hectic. Moving physically or mm -hmm. moving? Physically, we okay. don't have the space to another location. Mm -hmm. We can't accommodate uh, anymore what, what we're seeing. So, which is a really good thing. And I guess that can go sure. back to your point about businesses taking a hit during COVID. Absolutely not. I think that if there's a if there's a quality uh, standard and maybe enough drive from the powers that be, then you can't fail. So sure. people want to support you. So it's sad to see stuff like the food truck part. 
you know, it's, it's not being utilized. It's not being utilized. I don't. I don't understand what the stall it doesn't was. Doesn't exist practically. I did see what the stall was. I know that there were some community uh, possible business owners that didn't like the idea of the competition, but that's very narrow minded, and that's not really how you how you do things. I mean, it's all in downtown. We've got so much space and so much ability to pack in. I, I mean, I would say, in my opinion, this is just an opinion. We're at probably twenty percent of what we should be at as far as operating restaurants, bars, and just entertainment in general. Because is some of that the parking and the parking garages will assist that? Well, there's no question that the faster the parking lots go up, the faster this whole thing gets to the finish line. There's no question. But it's also about investors. I mean, my my partners and myself, there's a few others, but there's not there's not a massive push like we're doing, but that's not to be expected from everyone. Not everyone has the resources to do that, but it certainly should be easier for those that don't have the resources. To be able to um, seamlessly plant themselves in an area like downtown where there is so much focus and so much money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have the, 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 the RZ response, what, well, I guess it was like eight years ago that they made the plan, right? Seven years ago or so, and then they started implementing about three or four. That amount of money is the is the is the perfect springboard for an area to flourish. It's like throwing the best, most quality fertilizer on a crop that you possibly could. But if you don't add the sunlight and the water in a timely matter, you know, it's just not going to grow. And the analogy of the sunlight and the water. That's businesses. The businesses and the marketing. And marketing and it's, and it's ease of ordinances and communication from the city down to the stakeholders. That's a big problem. Has it improved? No. Okay. It's, it's, Maybe for a little bit it did, and then then we got hit with all of these legal ordinance changes that no one knew about. The food truck. That's, that's the first one. I mean, I, I don't. Okay. I'm pretty sure there's other ones that are coming down the line. And you don't feel that downtown business owners have been involved with developing or being aware of the ordinances mostly as they're being looked at and, and being developed. Yeah, mostly awareness. I don't think it's a. I don't think that I have any right or anybody else does to tell the city what to do, but it's nice to know what's going on. So once they're developed, you're not notified in any Correct. Uh, timely manner, but you don't see a necessity to work with the development. I mean, I'd love to. I'd love to. I think, I love I think to, the but food I truck ordinances should have had food truck people working on the ordinances. That's I would agree with you 100%, opinion. but I don't want to put the cart before the horse. I think that just if we could maybe focus on the communication piece, all of those other things. And this is, I mean, it's typical in any business. I mean, and it's just the, the city is running a business sure. at the end of the day. And so communicating to those people that are key factors to making sure that the city is still bringing in tax dollars or whatever. I mean, that's, that's the goal. Sure. Is to, to develop relationships and communication bonds with people that are bringing in sales tax dollars to move more revenue, to pay for better streets, to pay for better things. So communication, I think, is probably the first the first place. But I, I am very hopeful that with all of these boards that were accepted into this program that you guys are doing, I think that this will really start to open up those, those communication. Um, Barriers that possibly had before. Good. So, if, it does, if it doesn't, we'll try to That's right. But well, if it doesn't, you need to let us know. Absolutely. Well, and that's that's the thing. You've got someone, at least in me, that um, maybe this is maybe this will answer all three questions. I am someone that will not not tell you. Very straightforward. Because it's it affects me. It affects my family. It affects the place I live. It affects my taxes. It affects every single thing about my life is the area that I am rooted uh, and even broader. I'm, I'm about Temple, but very specifically right now for the next probably five to seven years, it's downtown Temple. Sure. So you've got, you've got somebody in the middle of it that is making millions of decisions a day that are based around a lot of these external factors that come from the city. So, well, I mean, obviously we appreciate the investment from the Bates family and the Harvey family. Extremely happy for your success, but we want to be part of making you guys, helping you guys become more successful. Sure. So there's not anybody in this room that, uh, please don't ever talk, there's anybody in this room that will not listen or is off limits to talk to. 
You live right down the street from me. You know no, where I live. I feel that way 100%. Okay. Um, maybe there are some people not in this room. That's fine. But we need they work for us. <laughs> they work for us. So exactly. We <laughs> need to hear those things. We real. I'm very appreciative of you coming in here and saying that today. Sure. It's very important. Well, I mean, anytime it's if really important to us. There's anything I can I can shed light on or just help. I mean, all I want to do is help, and I want to grow, and I want the city sure. to grow, and I want the city to to eventually incubate more and more of my businesses. And that's that's exactly what we want. That's all right? I want. So, every, as Tim said, everyone in this room. Hopefully, I'm qualified for the position. So well, you, you're, you're, just not, you're just not passionate. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's one thing I'm probably definitely not like. <laughs> I had no idea you lived right down the street from Tim, so I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, on 13th and Nugent. That's, that's probably really a recommendation to be able to just pull a pin over. That's okay. That's all right. But if you come help with yard work, <laughs> I have my yard's getting done right now, but I had to pay for it. So <laughs> Make sure you get on boards. Yeah. Yeah, don't get it. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Sure. Yep. Thank you for your Thanks, guys. Guys. Sir, All very good. All righty. Well, I'm sure we'll see everyone pretty soon. Thank you. Thank you all. We have two more folks hanging out there. You guys are trees. They brought a bunch of stuff. What kind of stuff? Uh, all kinds, I guess. Cookies, crackers. Do anybody need a bathroom break or anything? Okay, I still have a little Only 10 minutes behind right now. That we there, we've got a serious problem, or at least I do. There are too many applicants for not enough spots, and they're all good applicants. Welcome to the job. Well, <laughs> um, I would love a water, okay, but you're not my waiter, so I'll win. No, I'm gonna leave right after I gotta go to another meeting. So. But can I get any snacks? Just bring them all. Bring them all. Okay. Okay. I'll bring them all. It's she's the one that's a teacher and she only has like 10 minutes and she her interview starts in three minutes. Okay. So, right. Can you tell Mr. McBride that we're running to Yeah, we're gonna flip flop yeah. 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 If that and we're moving him to 11 15. 11 15? Yes. Go ahead and let her who is it we're going the next one down? Oh right. If he is <laughs> Ms. Barnett, are you there? Oh, she's connecting. Okay. Of course you connect. We have a lot of I told Ms. McBride we have some things to discuss. Oh, okay. yeah, do we? Anybody else want anything to drink? I just want a water. Water? Yes. I'll take another one, too. There's one, too. And I'm dying. Ashley, can you hear us? Huh? No, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. He is. Can you hear us? Can you hear and see me? Yes. Can you hear us? Barely. You're soft. Okay. I'll just I'll speak up. Thank okay. you for uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, and, uh, I, I know you have a, a limited time slot, so let's just hop right in. Uh, first, I appreciate your willingness to serve on this board. Um, and we we uh, we basically have three questions for you. And uh, the first question is, if you would please tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving on the Main Street Advisory Board. Sure. So my husband and I moved to Temple a few years back, and we knew that wherever we landed next, we were going to open a business. And we found ourselves in Temple and loved the community and. The direction that everything was headed and so we slowly started to become involved and each of us have a lot of experience uh, doing community engagement and I have a background in education I actually just switched back over to being in the classroom so thank you so much for accommodating my schedule I really appreciate it and we kind of took our first couple of years in Temple learning about everything from how the downtown is run to traditions to really kind of enjoying that smaller town feel which for us was very welcomed from coming from austin which is very hustling and bustling 
And we started attending the meetings and slowly getting involved and getting acquainted with other business owners. And then we acquired a property that we will be turning into a coffee shop and beer garden, hopefully later this year. And then attended the meetings more, had a bigger voice, and I kind of felt with the encouragement from Dan Kelleher that I was being called to participate in a bigger aspect in a broader capacity and wanted to be involved with the Main Street Advisory Board. Very good. Um, what skills, talents, or experience do you think that you'll bring to uh, sitting on this Main Street Advisory Board? So I'm a really good and active listener, so I like to make sure that I'm getting all of the information, but I'm also not shy to speak up and give a voice if I feel that there's one ready. I take action on items that need to be done. I'm pretty involved with the Temple Small Business Coalition, and we've worked really hard to bring the farmer's market back to Temple. So people like to tell me that not only will I get things started, but I'll also get them finished to completion and volunteer coordinating, event organizing, all of those things that require attention to detail are right in my wheelhouse. You're talking faster than I can write. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch that last one. Uh, last one is what would you like to accomplish as a board member? As a board member, I'm really looking forward to having the ability to vote on topics. I've been sitting in on a lot of the things the last year and a half and being able to have a voice that has a little bit of pull, I feel uh, will be really beneficial for the small businesses, but also I've lived in the downtown the last year and a half. So having been a resident and switching over to putting the hat of a small business owner, um, that's kind of what I'm hoping to be able to accomplish, that lens of both stakeholders. Can you tell me just a little bit more about your experience as an event coordinator? Sure. So I was in the Peace Corps for two years. And um, when I was in the Peace Corps, I did a lot of the volunteer training programs. So we would organize at the local level, but also at the national level. So logistics, coordinating, negotiating rates for hotels, things like that, meals, all of that. And then domestically, I was the volunteer coordinator for the elementary school that I worked at in Austin. So for our big fundraiser, which was the school carnival, I partnered with the local university across the way and their student athletes came out. They were able to get volunteer hours and we had the much needed extra man help to make sure that everything ran smoothly. And then I'm also um, currently the volunteer coordinator for Rucks on Main. So I kind of help make sure that we have the manpower so that that runs effortlessly the day of. So the, uh, this committee meeting, uh, right now, it's slated for the last Friday of each month at 9 a.m. Do you anticipate having an issue making meetings? No, during the summer it won't. And Dan told me that when I'm not able to, John, my husband, can stand in on my behalf. And then if there's ever something that requires a vote, I'll make sure that it's taken care of by me. Okay, understood. Do you have any questions for us? I don't. What are the next steps of how this works? So today we're interviewing all the applicants uh, that will uh, that have applied to sit on this board. And then um, we actually have a long interview process for all boards. It's going to last for the next 10 days or so. And then after that, we as a council will get back together and place people um, on those boards. So really, uh, you probably should not plan to hear back from us until roughly April 1 or so. So, you know, give us give of the time this is going to be a couple week process for us okay so that's great do you have any other questions for me or anything that i said that was concerning Council, i do have a question you um hoping to turn a, a property you purchased into a coffee shop where is that property so we're the ones that are located at 209 north 7th street we're fox dogs i thought that's i thought that was probably the one thank you Yes, that's us. So you have been on the board already? I have been sitting in on the meetings, yes. 
but have not been a board member? Correct. I've been a board member. So the, who's in red? People have applied for more than one position. Oh, I got you. Okay. All right. I was misreading that. Okay. Ms. Vernon, we thank you for slotting us in. I know you're busy. My wife and daughter. No, thank you so much. I really appreciate the flexibility. I know you, you teachers are busy. So thank you for uh, your commitment. Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. She and the old uh, Thank you. Thank market you. building. Yes. That her flight. So um, I was talking to her the other day about a different thing, but she said, uh, right here. How, how did you get her to do that? Uh, she's a buddy and she offered. So okay. she's Don't tell her we love her. She should come every time. <laughs> she's having trouble with uh, catering, of course, right now. Mm -hmm. You know, through COVID, it's just stopped altogether. So she's really focused on her meals, which are paleo meals, and she sends them all over the U.S. So they're and they're absolutely delicious. So she's trying to get back into some more local things. So yeah. This might be an option. Her acai bowls are really delicious and they're very refreshing. It's like a it looks like great um, ice cream. Later. All right, thank you, Alex. It's, it's nutrition. What, what's the word? Acai. Where does it come from? I don't know. I'm lucky I can say it. It's A C A I, and I always want to say it wrong. It's, it's acai. I think we're taking a five minute body break, and Wendell's taking a phone break. So, okay. get it if you need it. All right. Where's the coffee shop going to be? It's right behind MRB, Chris. Nine is North Nine North Seventeen, which is right behind the Central Fire Station, oh. or right just yeah. oh, south right. of there. And it's just a little, you know, one-story house. I think MRB would probably, you know, having them close yeah. is probably helpful. Um, I know whenever MRB has a food truck, it's very popular. Oh, that's good. You know. No, oh, yeah, I, I agree with Tim. We've got some some talking to do. Um, we need a better understanding of how the communication is being lost. Mm -hmm. um, that was really helpful. Yeah, there's chasm somewhere. I, I don't understand how. It with all the communication people we have right now, how that's not communicating. Yeah, I wanted to so you're right. How, how where is the yeah, where's the barrier there for
to know what it is.
it and yeah. don't want to have that happen again. We understand that communication was a great part of uh, what went wrong. Lack of communication was a great part of what went wrong. Yeah, I, yeah that was a sad, that was an unfortunate thing, but I think it helped shine a light on how everybody as a whole can, can work work better. And I learned that early on because I would, again, you know, my experience in the military creating policies or, or procedures for doing certain things and I would just do it in my foxhole or my bubble, not realizing what it affected outside here. And then I got, I got penned up pretty well because of it. And uh, so I learned, I learned the hard way. And I kind of think the city might have learned the hard way too, unfortunately. So. Any we hope we learned. Sorry. We hope we learned. Well, I mean, that's also part can. of it, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not in the brewery business or the food truck business. I'm, I'm, I know what I do. Yeah. And um, that's one thing about us being volunteers is we don't always uh, have full scope of understanding. Right. And that's one thing I think, you know, learning after retiring from the military and, and learning, you know, city governments and that they have these boards and commissions that help advise because none of us can be a subject matter expert on everything, and thankfully, probably to that case. Um, but it's good that it's good that these boards exist, these boards and commissions exist, because it helps everybody across the board. Um, I do think you know there is some of that you know more. I want to say diverse necessarily as far as skin color or gender or anything, but just diversity as far as not the same person serving sure. every you know year after year or you know term after term. Um, because you, you got to have some fresh ideas. And... We agree completely. Jay, do you have any questions for us? Uh, I don't think so. I want to make a comment, and you may have talked to other people back to the food truck situation. JD and I communicated after that situation, both by email and also uh, by the telephone. The food truck? Yeah, yeah. He contacted me. We had a good give and take on it. And I compliment you for the way you handled that and, and the discussions we had. And he made a comment earlier that he's a guy that digs into things. Yes, he does. Yeah. He researched the, the ordinance. He had his points and he knew the direction that, that he felt it should go. And I think the fact we came back and addressed some issues, maybe not all of them, are beneficial or a part and parcel of your involvement. I'm glad to hear that. So I know. And you know the the other businesses that I kind of became like the central person because we deal with most of most of them on a recurring basis throughout the brewery, and so it was easier to have one person hopefully kind of speak on a topic with you know everybody's consensus on, on the issue and their concerns than having fifteen people talk and it's like the same thing over and over. Again. Like, well, these are the issues I need to address. Much much more effective. I hope. Yeah. I hope so. And that's yeah. I just I whatever whether it's Main Street, whether it's PNZ, whether it's, I did say that I was open for another board, um, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. Just you know, um, and I'll say the word complain. I can't complain about some stuff I don't get involved. You know, I, I couldn't complain if I don't vote. That's that's how it works across the board. So um, I just looking forward to being more involved. And, like we're doing with the market in town, you know, trying to get that thing going. It's just trying to trying to help Temple become more of a destination place or uh, friends and family type thing that you know people are they're earning their money here because there's good there's good jobs here, but they spend their money elsewhere, and I don't like seeing that. So. Yeah. We don't hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call that leakage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're we're trying to do what we can to, to help that. That's one of our biggest and that's why we wanted to be in, in downtown temple was you know I've never really had a downtown be in the military the whole time we're always moving and so you know that's why we wanted where the location in town where we wanted. Um and we're, we're, our hope is that we can stay there for the very foreseeable future. So we hope that too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Sorry.
Hey, how's it going? Sorry to keep you waiting. Good. Yes. Feel free to take your mask off. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Brian. Um, we just got several questions for mm -hmm. this for each person that we're going to be asking, so we're asking all the same questions. And so we're going to just jump right into it. Okay. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in serving on this ministry. Um. Simple data. Uh, been here all my life. Uh, always been uh, one to be active with the community. Um, trying to be in tune with the community. Um, and uh, being on a board is kind of further engulfing yourself with that. So I love that. Um, further engulfing yourself uh, with that in the community and um, how things were ran, what is being done, and being in the know of, of and being a part of that um, and voicing your opinion. Um, as a citizen and as a resident. Have you served or been involved with the Main Street Committee before? Never with the Main Street Committee um, in a direct capacity. I think that you know, I had some um, stakeholder meetings and things of that nature that I've been a part of, uh, but haven't been directly on board. Have you been to the meetings? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, right. You know, over the years. Okay. You serve as a chair of any of those committees? Um, <laughs> currently chair of PNG right now. Um, um, vice chair, uh, I think the last two years leading up to now, um, and um, on PNZ board, I think that's all about right at five, four, four, four five years, I think it is. Um, but uh, as far as those meetings are concerned, just being heavily involved with them, planning meetings and things like that. Okay. Are you currently or any, any other board? Um, just PNZ, just PNZ. So I want to take on another challenge. Um, <laughs> um, in my crazy life. And what skills, talents, or experience would you bring to the board? Um, just the knowledge that number one that I've had um, engulfed myself in over the years of community to, to residents and um, on the real estate side of things, which is my career now. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I do um, on an everyday basis. And so, uh, what's to come and kind of what fits where. Um, um, simple as this is a busy place right about now. A lot of people, tons of people are coming to the temple. And so placement of certain things and um, our downtown area has to be you know, pretty essential and pretty key mm -hmm. for people to want to continue to come here and um, <coughs> spend their lives here. And then also, um, a lot of um, getting, get retaining people here, I guess you could say. Um, there's a lot of uh, young individuals who were graduate, whether it's uh, high school, college, typical college, et cetera, and then leave and go to somewhere else uh, where they could be possibly utilizing a talent here or starting their business here. Um, and so kind of the new direction of downtown and also um, business owners are young and I went to school with some of them and things of that nature there. So um, just getting more people kind of involved in the temple and letting people okay. know the temple is temple. When did you graduate again? Since 2006. I'm sure what you're asking. We graduated from Temple. Okay. I just feel old. You left one of them. Our, our oh, yes. yes. You're, you're doing well, well. That's <laughs> by yourself or at a company? Um, I was keeping it really deep at the keeping, brokerage. Where is that? Keeping it really deep is on Bird Creek. Uh, right, oh, right, right behind my I know teeth. where it is. Yes. Yeah. Zach Backer. Right? Yes, Zach yes. Backer is my brokerage. Yes. What, what would you like to accomplish on the board? As a member of the board? Um, being a part of the growth, I think um, um, it's a vested interest once you're a part of something, uh, number one, but then also seeing it from a start to finish type of thing. Um, I remember years back when none of the business was downtown, was downtown, mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of seeing that now, kind of what it's flourishing to, um, it's kind of getting more vibrant. I think mm -hmm. being a part of any type of community growth is something that always do you have any questions for us? No. Anybody else have any questions? Brian, I've got one for you. Sure. Take a couple of minutes uh, to kind of describe for us your vision of downtown Temple five, 10, 15 years from now. Oh, wow. Um, I think on 
on the business standpoint of things, um, having a mixture of, of um, mom and pops or you know small business, also um, uh, maybe a, a established restaurant, um, but then also having family oriented things or some forms of lounges or things like a, a mixture of culture um, downtown um, would represent what Temple is. So it's a diverse. We're, we're small, but getting to big point. And so it's becoming more and more diverse, more and more families, whether it's uh, doctors or military or just your, um, you know, spectrum worker, you know, it, it, it's a real diverse, you know, place. Um, and given that it's not, you know, two, two minutes away from West Adams, two minutes away from the mall, two minutes away from East Temple, uh, and it's kind of right directly in the center of Temple. So I think that having that diverse culture and, and um, new things being brought down there uh, will be uh, pretty essential to the growth of Temple. Um, whether and then also like I would love to see more of uh, like the, the residential, like townhomes, condos down there, a mixture of that because um, it's room for that. Um, and I think that you know we have a good starting point now. But, but yeah, just the just the diversity. That's 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 kind of my mind frame of um, what it will all entail in a nutshell. And then also the city working with those partners um, to make sure that transition, because uh, we it has to be appealing. It has to be, you know, not necessarily say incentive to bring your business down there, but why would I bring my business down there? And I, I think city working with community, working with businesses will make that happen. It's an excellent vision. Thank you for sharing. Um, I love that you say residential. Yes. I want to move downtown too. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Yes, yes. I mean, I'm I, 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 Lloyd, yes. I want the top floor of this yes. building if you'll ever do it. Yes. Susan Luck and I are going to share those two floors. Well, a lot more people. But we won't live long to. enough. Well, I mean, there are a lot of people who are moving to that. I mean, we have down, I think, keep on going down 31st Street past Stripes. Those little townhomes over there, Belton. Uh, Belton uh, is getting, I think they have like 200. Subdivision, which is just just straight town on sure. condo type of feel. So I think that uh, if we can incorporate those patches within the fabric of Temple. I think that it would bring the, the attention there. That's kind of when people are moving smaller. They're not necessarily going bigger, and it, you know, it's housing market. It is smaller as well compared to traditional homes. So um, just kind of thinking forward and intertwining the two, but yet still bringing the tradition of Temple and home small town feel at the same time. You know, when you think about that, it wasn't that long ago. <clears throat> there was no housing in downtown Austin. Yes. yes. Just commercial. Yes. yes. And some skyscrapers. Yes. And banks built big buildings. And now it is a residential mecca. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it has happened in a relatively short time. Around. Yes. That's changing demographics. That's all those issues. But I think that is a worthwhile goal. For them. Oh, it, it's, it's happening. I mean, I honestly tell you the market is... It's it's crazy. You, your house may be twenty four hours in the market. Great time to I'm a full keep going off now. Great time. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> take this. Oh yes, yeah, great time. <laughs> yes, but that's good. Yes. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna play it. You're also on the P and Z board. Now. Yes, sir. So if there was a choice, which is your number one board? <laughs> um. <laughs> How much more time do you have on this? Is, your turn is up until yeah. September of 42. Yeah, 22. Yeah. Um, I love PNZ. I kind of grew to love PNZ. I think you can grow to love getting forward. But um, PNZ, I would say for now, because I'm now any other one, mm -hmm. um, just because of uh, kind of how detailed it is. And it, it kind of goes right into along the line of my career, just, in, you know, mm -hmm. seeing the growth and things like that. And I have a hands on. Um, experience with it being in real estate, mm -hmm. and so um, and helping to control that growth in, in a yes. doable way. <laughs> yes, which is I mean, you yes. remember all the the headaches with mm -hmm. the uh, townhomes. Yes, out on thirty first at ninety three. Yes, abutting. Yes, yes, yes. You know exactly what I'm yes. talking about, and, and the new ordinances being designed mm -hmm. there. That's yeah, really and the, the control I think it would be the is is always. How do you how do you have that balance? Right, and you and hope you get that balance before yes. the community's the, up in arms. Yes, yes, and and that's the I think that's the one thing that we're kind of or have been tackling um, is find that balance because you can put a million homes, but if it's not 
structured properly or if it doesn't have proper right of ways, if it doesn't have proper things around it, you get to that point, you just, you know, you, you lose the interest of the residents. People focus on the money aspect of it. So yeah, find that balance is key, I think. Um, but to answer your question, I mean, I just love being there, so I'm just kind of, you know. That's fine. Yeah, as it is all it is, but okay. getting on other things is more important. I appreciate your interest in being involved. Oh, yes. oh, we do. Oh, yeah, I love it. I love it. I love, it. I love, it. I love the city. So while I'm here, I want to make sure I do my diligence to try to help it make a difference. Brian, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Yes, 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 yes. It's back to work. Go sell Go sell something. Yeah, I know I am. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night. You, you too. Bye bye.